is Bina with TCM Review Seminars. You guys have been asking me for these empirical points for a long time, so here's the video. Empirical points are points that have one really good function. These are the points that you think about when a particular symptom or disease manifests. Sometimes their definition or the way they're used is clinical information might not appear in their indications or in their functions from Deadman or Machiocha or CAM or any of the other books that are on your board exams. But they are very important to know, so I'm going to give you a little overview. Now, if you're taking one of my classes, California Boards, Pan-Canadian, or even NCCOM, we cover a lot of points. We cover a lot of single points. We cover a lot of Dwei Shui, um, which are two points or more, but small point prescriptions, two, maybe three points, local distal, symptomatic points. All of these are under the category of empirical points. But in today's presentation, these are the heavy hitters. These are the big points that you absolutely want to know. They give you the most bang for your buck. So let's get started. First off, we have headaches. And there are quite a few points for headaches, but the point that Deadman says is the empirical point for any kind of headache, lung seven. So if you're used to using this for like occipital pain, wind cold type headache, just realize it is okay to use it for any kind of headache that appears according to Deadman. Then we have one-sided headaches. One-sided headaches, temporal. Temporal is the region for what uh, channel? Gallbladder. You got it. Gallbladder. So temporal is the opposite end of the channel. So you're going to use GB41, which is down at the feet. So if you have symptoms in the head, you can drain them out by using the same channel point at the opposite end. So in this case, on the foot. Then we have headaches associated with menstrual cycle. This is also a point that is from Deadman, and Deadman says that Sanjiao 5 clinically is what works for headaches that, is, that are associated with the menstrual cycle. Now this can be before with PMS, during, which could be more like a blood stasis issue, et cetera, or it could even be, um, after the menses, that would be due to deficiency. But Sanjiao 5 will help the flow of blood and it'll also help to anchor the yang if it is rising up to the head. Boils, not a pretty picture, but there you go. Boils, empirical point is Duten. Duten works really great for any kind of boils. Boils, you can also think of like carbuncles, froncles, those are other types of boils or boils is the big category. They're going to fall under this. So if you see carbuncles in your case study, if you see froncles in your case studies or boils, do 10 is the point to use. Next we have rabies and well, if someone has rabies, you're sending them to the ER. But if you want to know what point you would use for rabies, GB36. Then we have phlegm. Super easy. You guys know this one. Stomach 40. But if it's non-substantial phlegm, what point will you use? PC5. PC5 is non-substantial phlegm. So let's just break that down, right? We have two types of phlegm. Substantial, it means it can be substantiated. Usually it's lung, or it is actually lung. Lung phlegm is substantial or visible phlegm, as it's called, because it can be expectorated outside the body and it can be substantiated. Yes, there's phlegm in the lungs. That point would be lung five. It's not in this slide, but you can write it in. For PC5, this is non-substantial phlegm. And non-substantial phlegm is phlegm that is inside the body, like 
kidney stones, UB stones, gallbladder stones. What else? Phlegm in the channels leading to numbness, phlegm misting the mind leading to mental disorders, any kind of phlegm that is in the body that can't be expectorated out. Now, here's the exception, right? Kidney stones get past, UV stones get past, gallbladder stones get past as well. So that is the exception. Just remember PC5, non-substantial phlegm. Okay, next we have dizziness due to phlegm. So phlegm, unlike damp, likes to rise up to the top of the body. It affects the lungs, it's made in the middle gel, it's stored in the lungs. You have phlegm that affects the heart. Stomach has a direct connection to the heart via the divergent channel. So phlegm that's made in the middle gel updrafts to the heart, leading to mental, emotional issues. But also phlegm follows the stomach channel up and it can lead to dizziness. What's the famous disease that has to that causes dizziness that has phlegm as its source? I'll give you a minute. If you said Meniere's, that's right, Meniere's disease. And so if someone comes in with Meniere's or they have vertigo or intense dizziness and you know it's due to phlegm, not liver yang rising, not liver fire, and not due to kidney yin or yang deficiency, the point to use is going to be stomach ache. Next we have damp. I know you know this one as well. Spleen, nine, all day long. Okay, our next two syndromes are goiter and scrofula. Scrofula is a disease with glandular swelling. So in that way, it's the same where goiter is thyroid swelling. And both can be treated with Sanjiao 3, Lung 3, and LI-14. Then we have jaundice, and jaundice is treated with DO9 and also SI4. Now we're moving into shoulder pain, and this can be just pain in the shoulders. It can also be like a frozen shoulder, and the empirical point for that is stomach 38. Okay, next we have uterine bleeding. And uterine bleeding, the point for this one is spleen one. You guys know that one, I'm sure. Moxa, spleen one, stops uterine bleeding. This is unexplained bleeding outside the time of normal menses or when the menstruation just doesn't stop. It just keeps going for, you know, two weeks, three weeks, Instead of having a hysterectomy, you can start addressing these issues through the spleen, tonifying the spleen so it holds the blood, and then also using moxa at spleen one. Next we have breast problems, breast issues like what? Mastitis and poor lactation would be another one. SI1 is the point to use for breast problems. It's our distal point, and it is good for any kind of issues with the breast. You, of course, are going to pair it with other points like REN17 local, stomach 18 local, maybe a PC1, or even a GB21 if you're trying to move excess in the breast. Then we have aphasia, and heart five is the point for aphasia. Heart five is the low point for the heart channel, and it has a direct pathway up to the tongue. So one of the main functions of the heart is that it governs speech. So not only what's being said, you can tell the state of a person's heart by how they speak, the words they use, but also the ability to actually make speech by movement of the tongue, and that's controlled by heart five, the Luo channel. Heart five is also the point to use when you have heart qi deficiency, because it's the qi that moves the tongue. Okay, next we have our breached baby. 
breech baby or malposition of the baby is treated by UB67. Now I've been in clinic for over 10 years now and what I find is that UB67 super effective. The one drawback is is that if the mom is small and the baby is really big then the earlier you work to turn the baby the better. Once the baby is too big it gets really hard for that baby to turn. So UB67 in the 34th week, 35th week, great. I'm not saying it won't work after um, the 35th week. I'm just saying that your chances are better if you address it earlier. Next we have hemorrhoids and hemorrhoids are best treated with UB57 and also the extra point or by. Okay, next we have heat in the blood leading to skin disorders. So what kind of skin disorders? Any kind really. Rashes that are red, psoriasis, eczema, herpes zoster, erysipelas, any kind of skin rash that looks red and inflamed and irritated is treated with spleen 10. Spleen 10 helps to move blood. It also helps to cool blood. So it's a really important point if someone's coming in with derm dermatological issues. Now spleen 10 can also tonify and nourish blood as well. So it has a dual function. Okay, genital issues. With genital issues, liver five. Liver five is a Luo channel. Luo channels are great because they drain excess from the channel, right? And so here, liver five, where does the Luo channel go? Where does it go? It circles the genitals. And so liver five is a great point for any kind of itching, any kind of swelling, cold uh, that affects the genitals leading to shrinking vagina or even like um, shrinking scrotum. Liver five is a great point for that. Then we have pain all over the body. You might be able to guess this point, spleen 21. Spleen 21 is the great Luo. All channels have one Luo point, right? The spleen has two. The great Luo connects all the minute collaterals, the tiny little capillaries, and as you know, that pain anywhere in the body is a lack of free flow of what? Of chi and blood. And so spleen 21 is able to activate the little microcapillaries, the capillaries, the collaterals. It gets blood and chi moving all over the body. So when you're thinking of pain all over the body, what kind of pain? It can be localized pain, but it works actually better for unexplained pain like fibromyalgia. And we know as acupuncturists, fibromyalgia has a big connection with spleen chi deficiency. So spleen 21, great point for your fibro patients. Then we have dysmenorrhea, and dysmenorrhea is treated with UB32. It is on the sacrum, and it's very good at moving blood. It's good for excess in the lower jowl. And then we have spleen eight. Spleen eight is a she cleft point, and it helps with painful menses. Okay, then we have constipation. And constipation, Sanjiao 6 and kidney 6. Kidney 6 builds the yin fluids. Sanjiao 6 moves and regulates fluids. You need to create moisture in the large intestine when there's constipation. So these two points are great for constipation. Now we're moving into leucorrhea. And leucorrhea is treated by GB26. GB26 is a point on the dye channel. And the dye channel is an extra channel that runs, is it vertically or is it um, horizontally? It runs horizontally, right? It's the only channel in the body that runs horizontally. 
So when you have leucorrhea, and this is only for deficiency type, you can think of the GB channel being too loose. So for leucorrhea, you will need to tighten the belt, tighten that dye channel that runs around the waist, and that will prevent leakage of fluids. And so GB26 is the point that's gonna help with that. Again, leucorrhea, but deficiency type only. Excess type leucorrhea tends to be damp heat, and that has a whole different approach to treatment. Okay, food stagnation. I know you know which point I'm gonna say. Internating, there we go. Yeah, internating, opposite side of stomach 44. It's on the plantar side, on the bottom of the foot. Great point for after Thanksgiving dinner, for sure, right? Or any other time that you are having a big feast. Okay, next we have sciatica. The point to use is GB30. This one I know you know. So why do we use GB30? GB30 is a great point because it's the crossing point for the gallbladder channel and the UB channel. And as you know, sciatica starts in the low back, L3, L4, L2, this area, and then it travels, it's radiating pain because the sciatic nerve is pinched. And where do we see the pain? Where pain radiates either down the lateral side of the leg, so GB channel, or it radiates down the UB channel, the back of the leg. And so using GB30 is really powerful because you're activating gallbladder, you're activating UB, you activate both the channels. And as you know, or at least in my experience in my clinic, when I have sciatic patients, it's never a pain that goes all the way down the GB channel or UB channel. It tends to be a combination. Okay, next we have hernia. Hernia is treated best by liver one. And then we have edema. And edema, the point to use is REN9. REN9 is great for whole body edema. It's really good for ascites, which is a side, um, a side effect or uh, a symptom of hepatitis, hepatitis C. Uh, it's where the abdomen fills with fluids. So REN9 is a great point for that. It's uh, really great for weight loss as well. So you can use it for edema or you can use it for weight loss. Then we have epilepsy, and epilepsy is best treated with DU2. Our next symptom is edema on the face, and edema on the face is best treated with DU26. DU26 is really good at moving fluids in the face. So when we think of edema on the face, we're really thinking of young edema. That's acute exterior edema that's caused by wind water invasion. So you have sudden swelling. It can be under the eyes, it can be eyelids, but it can it spreads to the entire face. And the edema starts at the top, which is on the face. That's why it's called young edema. And then it spreads down through the whole body, where yin edema starts, well, depends on what book you read, but it's going to start and be most apparent in the lower part of the body. There are times where yin edema starts on the eyelids, and so this can throw students off because if it starts on the eyelids, then isn't it yang edema? It started at the top of the body. Well, that's the one exception, right? Usually you see with yin edema swelling on the feet first, then it spreads to the calves, then up to the thighs, then it spreads to the middle. Yin edema is due to spleen and kidney, yang deficiency. Yang edema is due to wind water invasion. Okay, our last slide is drowning, and drowning is treated with REN1. Okay, that's the end of my presentation on empirical points. If you liked the video, make sure that you like it, and please subscribe to the channel as well. If you're interested in learning more about the classes I offer, you can go over to tcmreview.com or tcmreview.ca. I teach with 
and own TCM review seminars and we do board review for nationals, for the Pan-Canadian exams and also for the California boards. Okay, I look forward to seeing you in my classes.